Good morning, good afternoon everyone, and welcome to this new Unity Quick Tip video. Today I'm going to create a very basic AI thanks to the finite state machine pattern. And this AI will be able to look at its surroundings, collect coins when they pop, do a little dance of victory, and finally go store the coin in a big chest before running back to its initial position. Are you ready? Then let's dive in. When you develop games, you'll often need to give your characters and monsters a very basic form of intelligence, so that they can patrol around, chase your hero, or even mimic more complex human behaviors and replace a real opponent during training. Over the years, people have invented lots of architectures to simulate this artificial intelligence that each have their advantages and drawbacks. Today, I'm going to focus on a well-known AI pattern the Finite State Machine, or FSM. Roughly put, FSMs work as follows. You have a finite set of states that your entity can be in. You define transitions to switch between those states that can be triggered in various ways. And so the entity has an active state that is initialized to a default state and can then change throughout its lifetime thanks to the transitions. Finite state machines are usually a quick way of modeling simple AIs that have a limited number of actions and a deterministic behavior. There are multiple techniques to implement this pattern in your game. For example, you can create one c -sharp class per state and encapsulate all the logic and the data relevant to this state in this class. If you want a more in-depth example of FSMs, and if you want to see how to apply this multi-class technique, make sure to check out this other video I made on state machines. But when your AI is really simple, like this one, you can actually stick with just one class and use an enum to define your different states. Then you just need to keep the current state in a variable, set it to the default state at the beginning, and check what your current state is in the update to know what logic to run. Here, let's say my character has three possible states. First, the idle state. That's for when the character is not doing anything, it's the default state and the character will remain in this state until a coin pops and triggers a transition. Then, if the character finds a target, be it a coin, the chest or the initial position, it will enter the move to state and aim at that target until it's reached it. Finally, if the character has picked up a coin, it will stop for just a second and go to its dance state, long enough to perform a little dance of victory, before resuming to the move to state and bringing the coin to the chest. So, by the way, this means that I have two types of transitions, conditional and unconditional. For example, going from idle to move to is conditional, it will only happen if there is a coin in sight. But going from dance to move to is unconditional. The state machine will simply wait for the time of the dance animation. Also, the only difference between moving to a coin, the chest or the initial position is what happens at the very end of the move, when the character reaches the target. So we can actually prepare a global logic for all these moves and use a C-sharp delegate to handle the specific logic when we reach the target. Then, to move my character, I need a reference to its character controller component. I'll also add a reference to its animator so that I can switch to another animation along with my FSM state. If you want to learn more about animations and animators, you can take a look at this tutorial I made recently on how to animate a Mixamo character in Unity. Now, in my update, all I have to do is call the moveTo function if I'm in the moveTo state. Similarly, if I'm in the dance state, I'll call the dance function. The idle state doesn't run any logic. Okay, now that I have the structure of my state machine in place, it's time to fill these methods and do some transitions. First, the move to will simply compute the direction to the target position and either move the character controller towards it or call the onreach target delegate if the point is close enough. Then each delegate will do a different thing. 
When we reach a coin, we want to destroy the coin game object, switch to the dance state and look at the camera. When we reach the chest, we want to increase the coin counter, for example using an event from a global UI manager, and aim back for the initial position. When we reach this initial position, we want to tell the coin spawner script we are ready for a new coin, with another event, go back to the idle state and look back at the camera. Finally, in the dance method, I'll have a little counter that checks whether I've exceeded the duration of the dance animation, in my case this animation lasts just over 2 seconds, and when this delay has elapsed, I need to switch back to the move to state and go to the chest. Also, I need to make sure I reset the dance delay in the onreach coin delegate so that next time the state machine waits for the animation to complete once again. The last step is to actually start all the sequence of actions with the initial trigger from idle to move to when a coin pops. To do this, we can use a sphere collider to define the character's field of vision, set it to be a trigger, and then, back in our script, use the onTriggerEnter built-in function to start all of our logic. And here we are! We now have a very basic AI that, thanks to the power of finite state machines, can auto-collect coins and do little dances of victory. Pretty cool, right? I hope you enjoyed this short Unity tutorial. Make sure to like and share it if you did. And also, you can subscribe to the channel and notifications to not miss the next ones. And of course, I am looking forward to your comments for new ideas of tutorials. If you want to discover more of my content, make sure to check out these two videos I made recently. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for more videos on coding and games.